Hey up everyone. Right, so tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, right now, it's the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah. So I wanted to talk to you about what Hanukkah is. Um, and I'm also going to do some readings that are associated with the celebration. Right, so I'm not actually Jewish. But my friend, she's she's half Jewish, but she was brought up by the non-Jewish part of her family, so she didn't really know very much about what it was to be a Jew. And um, a couple of years ago, um, she asked me to teach her what it was to be a Jew, because she knew that like I've studied religion and I knew all about it and stuff. So, so what we started doing is um, we started celebrating all of the Jewish holidays together. Um, and the Jewish holidays, usually there's um, a book of the Bible um, that you're supposed to read because it tells you the story of why, what you're celebrating and what's going on and stuff, right? So, like, for instance, the, the, the holiday of Pur, Purim, you read the book of Esther, which tells the story about why Pur, Purim is celebrated and stuff, right? Now, the thing is about Hanukkah is it's a little bit weird, a bit strange, in that there isn't anything in the Bible about Hanukkah, right? Hanukkah's never mentioned in the Bible. And even in the Torah, there's only a very small part of it that mentions anything about Hanukkah. It just says that it's a celebration for eight days and that you light candles to um, remember um, our, um, to, to remember uh, a miracle that God performed during this time. But there's not very much in it. Um, so so what Jews generally do is they read Psalm number 30, which mentions a little bit about this. But the thing is that the story of Hanukkah is actually told in two books that are part of what's called the Apocrypha. Now the Apocrypha are a collection of stories and folk tales and stuff that a part of Jewish history, but they didn't make it into the Bible. So they're a bit like the Gnostic Gospels in Christianity, in that they were considered to be holy books, but they didn't make it in the final cut to get into the Bible. Now the thing is that, like so, the Gnostic Gospels in Christianity are cons considered to be heresy, and you're not supposed to read them. But the books of the Apocrypha are not thought of like that in Judaism. So people still consider them to be the word of God. And they're still considered to be kind of holy books, even though they didn't make it into the Bible. So although it's not traditional to read from the Apocrypha, a lot of Jews do. Because there are two books in the Apocrypha which explain the story of Hanukkah. Right. So the story of Hanukkah is this. Um, the Greek king Antiochus um, went to war against the Jews and he conquered Jerusalem and he took the temple that was there, uh, the Jewish temple, and he destroyed the temple and completely razed it down and completely destroyed everything, right? And this led to a rebellion by a group called the Maccabees and the Maccabees were Jews and they rose up and they fought against Antiochus um, and they also fought against the other Jews because when the Greeks conquered this area a lot of Jews assimilated into Greek culture they stopped circumcision and they stopped celebrating their holidays and stuff and they became Greek like Greek citizens or whatever right so basically the Maccabees rose up, they fought against uh, Antiochus, and they also fought against the other Jews. So this was like a civil war within Judaism, right? 
So the Maccabees rose up and they fought back against them and they defeated the Greeks and they kicked them out and they captured Jerusalem back and they captured the temple and then they they rebuilt the temple. Um, and so this is this is a celebration of them recapturing the temple and rebuilding the temple. But also what happened was that to to like um, sanctify or to to um, to, to um, celebrate the fact that they'd taken over, they they lit candles because this is something that they, that you do in Judaism. But they didn't have any oil, or they had a very small amount of oil that they could light the candles with. Um, because traditionally, so today when we celebrate this, we light candles every day, right? And we use candles, but uh, they. But originally they didn't use candles, they used olive oil, right? And then had little containers with olive oil in it and they would burn that. And so they didn't have very much oil and they lit a candle and they expected the candle to go out after one day. That's only as much oil as they had. But surprisingly, the oil lasted for eight days. And this is considered to be a miracle that God performed um, by making the oil last this long. So that's why we light candles. In, in, to, for this and we have we, we the, the celebration lasts for eight days because that's how long the oil lasted for um and then we light candles on each day to celebrate each day that passes um so that's essentially what hanukkah is it's a celebration of the recapturing of the temple and the rebuilding of the temple and the miracle that god performed by keeping the oil alive um and it's 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 a wonderful holiday. I like Hanukkah. Um, some of the food that you eat is just absolutely delicious. And all the food that you eat is all cooked in olive oil as like a remembrance of the oil that was used. And oil becomes quite an important part of this, of this holiday. Right, so, so that's, that's basically the story of Hanukkah um, and what it is that we celebrate. So now I'm going to do... I'm going to read the readings that they do. So essentially, when we light the candles, um, we we say um, we say a little prayer. She's basically to thank God. Um, it just starts off, God, Creator of the world, thank you for bringing us to this season. Thank you for your miracles and stuff. And you, you say the prayer as you light the candles on the on the thing. But then you would have a big feast um, and you would have all these different foods that are all cooked in oil and stuff like that. And then at the end of the meal, you would have the reading. Um, and this is usual for Jewish holidays. You get to the end of the meal and then you usually read... Um, the passage from the Bible that explains the holiday. But like I say, Hanukkah's not really mentioned in the Bible. Um, it's not even mentioned in the Torah very much. So we read from Psalms, Psalms 30, which kind of mentions this, which is, is about, it's only quite short, is, is Psalm 30. And then there's an alternative reading from the Apocrypha, which is it's quite long, but... <laughs> I'm going to read it to you because it basically tells the story of Hanukkah. Okay, so, Psalm 30. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried upon thee, and thou hast healed me. Lord, thou hast broken my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down unto the pits. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth, but a moment in his favour is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favour thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made application. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? 
Hear, O God, and have mercy upon me, Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me mourning and dancing, thou hast put off the sackcloth and gir girded me with gladness, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. So that's Psalm 30. Um, and as you can see, Psalm 30 is about um, the way that God protects the Jews. Um, and that when they're in trouble, God intervenes and looks after them. And this is kind of mirrored in the books of Maccabee, um, which I'm not going to read because, well, it's ridiculously long and it'll take me forever to read it here. But I'll just give you a summary of what the books of Maccabee actually say. So there's actually four books of Maccabee and the first two are the ones that really deal with Hanukkah. Um, the third and fourth ones are mainly about philosophy um, and about the philosophy of re religion and how that um, affects the Jews' relationship with God and stuff. But the first two books of Maccabee, um, now like the, like because it's like this four books, people think it's one book that's split up into four. It's not, it's, it's four separate books that deal with the similar sort of themes and stuff. So the first book of Maccabee tells how Antiochus comes in to Jerusalem um, and when he enters Jerusalem, he goes to all the different temples, right? And he gives sacrifices and um, pays homage to all the different uh, all the different temples and stuff in the city. But then when he goes to the main temple, the priests refuse to let him in, right? And they say only the high priests are allowed in there and only for one day a year. Nobody else is allowed to go in. And Antiochus is not pleased about this. And so he forces his way into the temple. And there's a massive ruckus outside the temple and all the Jews and stuff are like demonstrating against this, right? And Antiochus takes umbrage about the Jews not submitting to his will. And he basically goes on like this genocidal fucking thing where he wants to kill all the Jews. Um, and he 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 forces the Jews to register so that there has to be like um like an accounting of how many Jews there are right and then he one and this goes on for forty days the registering of Jews and there's lots of Jews who refuse to do this who refuse to be registered and there's lots of people in the city who like give um who allow the Jews to like hide out in their homes and stuff like this, right? Basically, Antiochus goes mental and like kill, he just, he decides to kill all the Jews, right? And he decides to kill all the people who've helped the Jews and stuff. And there's this massive slaughter that goes on. He basically employs this guy with a load of elephants and he uses the elephants to crush all the Jews and to kill them, to walk over them and kill them and stuff like this, right? And basically this goes on for a long time. But the Jews pray to God to save them. And on a few occasions, Antiochus gets all his people together and he says, you need to go out and you need to kill all these Jews, right? And then when the Jews are brought before him to be killed in the daytime, he then changes his mind and says, no, 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 we should keep them alive and save them and stuff, right? And this is because God has influenced him, got into his head and changed his mind. Then when it gets to the evening time, he's back into, we need to kill all the Jews, we need to kill all the Jews and stuff, right? Basically, this goes on. And when this guy with all the elephants starts killing all the Jews, Antiochus decides that he wants to save the Jews again. And this, this goes back and forth where he wants to save the Jews and where he wants to kill the Jews and stuff like this. And basically... He gets all the Jews into the big um, Acropolis that's there. There's thousands of them all crammed in. And he basically lines up all these elephants and he lines up all these military and stuff 
and he's going to get them to go kill the Jews, right? But then God intervenes, yeah, and he gets the elephants to turn round and to attack all the troops, and all the troops get killed rather than the Jews, right? And then Antiochus has a change of opinion again, and he decides to let the Jews go free, right? What this is a story of, what, what the, that, that this is the story of, is how these Jews become assimilated into Greek culture, right? So basically, once he lets the Jews go free, they then submit to the king, um, and they become like um, Greek citizens, right? So that's the first book. The second book covers a lot of the same ground of the first book, but it goes into it a lot more detail, and, and the story goes on a bit longer than this, right? So basically, he, he, he lets the Jews go, and he lets them save, and then they submit to him, and they become Greek citizens. But then there's still all these other Jews who are on the run from him, and who are hiding, and a lot of them are hiding out in the, in the mountains, and in the deserts, and in other people's homes, and stuff like this. So there's like basically like two groups of Jews, yeah? There's one group who have now submitted to the king, and there's the other group who are still rebellious against him. So, in the first one, he's just conquered Jerusalem, and he's, he's entered into the temple um, when he's not supposed to, and this has angered the Jews. In the second book, he destroys the temple, right? He still has this hatred for the other Jews, the Jews who have not submitted to him. And he sends out troops and stuff looking for them with orders to kill them and stuff, right? But in his anger, he destroys the temple completely. Destroys the altar, destroys the building, and raises it to the ground, right? And this angers the Jews who were on the outside. And then they join together and they rise up in rebellion against this king. And they go to war with him. And this war is fought out, there's elephants and stuff, and there's a big massive battle. Basically the king loses, Antiochus gets chased out, um, and he runs away, because all his troops have been killed, and he runs away, and the Jews take over the temple again. And then at this point, they start to rebuild the temple. And they build an altar. And in praise to God, because because during this battle, God intervenes on the side of the Jews so that they can win this battle against Antiochus um, that makes them victorious and allows them to capture Jerusalem and the temple again. It's because God intervenes on their side, right? So in praise of God for this, they decide to light candles but all the olive oil and stuff has been destroyed during this war and they can only find a very small amount of it but they decide to light a candle from this in praise of God but surprisingly the candle lasts for eight days rather than they thought it would only last for one day it lasts for eight days and people consider this to be a miracle that God performed um, and so that's those are the book from from the Maccabees. These are the two books. Um, like I said, the third and fourth books are more to do with philosophy and the nature of God and the nature of religion and stuff like that. But these are the only books that tell the story of why we celebrate Hanukkah. So it lasts for eight days in remembrance of the candles being lit and lasting for eight days. It's a celebration of food, um, of light, of remembrance. But it's also about praising God and God's protection. And that's why they read Psalm 30, because that's all about God protecting them and stuff. So that's the story of Hanukkah. That's why we celebrate it, and that's why we celebrate it in the way that we do. So, happy Hanukkah, everyone.